Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode with the x -Fizz Guy here. Today I want to review one of the topics that I think gets students the most tripped up. I spend a lot of time on this topic in class when we get to it, and that is the American College of Sports Medicine's Metabolic Equations for Calculating Oxygen Consumption, otherwise known as VO2. Now calculating VO2 is important because it gives us a representation of the metabolic demand that your body is under. And we can use VO2 for prescribing exercise intensities and volume progression or just progression in general throughout an exercise program. It's what it's my personal favorite method for for um, progressing my own aerobic uh, workout specifically. Um, and I just I'm very into the science, so I like that the VO2 represents a lot of physiology. Um, of course, again, VO2 is cardiac output times arterial venous oxygen difference, and cardiac output can be defined as heart rate times stroke volume. So we can tell a lot just by um, VO2. It gives us a lot of uh, physiology that we can go off of. If VO2 is going up, is it because stroke volume has gone up, or is it because the VO2 difference has increased? That's a discussion for a different day. But the metabolic equations, we use them for calculating VO2 at a given exercise intensity. Or we can manipulate them, the equations that is, to say, well, if we want to exercise at a certain VO2 at, say, a certain speed on the treadmill, what grade would we need to be at? And we could do that as well. Now, I'm not going to do any mathematical examples in this video, but I will. Uh, do them in a separate video and I will go through all the different possibilities that can be done. Uh, from the very simplest finding of VO2 to finding what speed you would need at a certain grade or what grade you would need at a certain speed. And for cycling equation, you know, what work rate you would need to be at to reach a certain VO2. I will go over all of those. There is an equation for arm cycling. I just didn't decide to add it today because you won't use it that much, um, but it is there. Now, students who are looking to take ACSM tests, the metabolic equations you do not have to memorize. So you do not have to memorize these equations, but you will have to memorize and know all the conversion factors. So for example, the speed, must be in meters per minute. You have to know that in order to get your miles per hour into meters per minute, you have to take the miles per hour and multiply that by 26.8. On the exam, they're going to assume that you know how to do that. Um, again, the, uh, you'll need to know how to get body weight in pounds into kilograms. Take the pounds, divide it by 2.2. They're going to assume that you know how to do that. They are not going to give you those conversion factors. They will give you these equations as I have them out like this, and that is it. They will not give you anything else. Now, in your walking and your running equations, right off the bat, I want to point out a few caveats. With the walking equation, the walking equation is most accurate for speeds of 1.9 miles per hour to 3.7 miles per hour. Keep that in mind. The running equation is most accurate for any speeds over five miles per hour. So with what I just told you, you might be saying to me, well, what happens between 3.8 miles per hour and 4.9 miles per hour? So that's a good question. If it's an exam format, the exam question should specify if they want you to use the walking or the running equation. And they may not say it in such a way, they may not say, for this, use the running equation. But they'll be very subtle. They may say, you have a individual running at 4.7 miles per hour. So that's your, that's your key, that's your clue that you know to use the running equation. Or they might say, you have an individual walking at 4.0, 4.0 miles per hour. That's how you know to use the walking equations or running equations. If it's not in that situation and you're out in the field and you have a person on a treadmill, how do you know? You have to examine the biomechanics and the gait. If say at 4.0 miles per hour, you, um, you observe a clear 
flight phase, which means both feet off the ground at the same time, that then you would use the running equation. Um, the cycling equation, again, VO2, uh, 1.8. Any of the numbers up here that I have as numbers, those are constants. Those will not change. What will change are speeds, grades, work rates, body weights, frequencies, and heights. So in the cycling equation, I'm pointing out the caveats here first. Your work rate has to be in kilogram meters per minute. You may see that abbreviated as KGM slash MIN or KG slash M slash MIN. It's the same thing. The biggest trip up with the cycling equation is when a question asks you something about cycling and they throw in watts. You cannot plug watts into this equation. Even though watts are a measurement of power and a measurement of intensity and a work rate, it does not fit in this equation. So you'll have to take whatever watts they give you, say it's 100, you'll have to multiply that by six to get 600 kgms per minute. Again, that's something come exam time, if you're, if you're a student looking to take the exam, that's something they're going to assume you know. They're not going to clue you in to do that, and they're not going to give you that conversion factor. Um, and again, body weight must always be in kilograms. Take the body weight, divide it by 2.2. Uh, that will give you the weight in kilograms. So for walking and running, your speed must be in meters per minute. Take the speed, multiply it by 26.8. That will give you meters per minute. Your grade must be in a decimal format. So if it's a 5% grade, you will plug 0 0.05 into this space here. Do not plug in 5. Um, if you have a grade of, say, 12, that would be 0.12. So you will put 0.12 in there. Another question I get asked about a lot is why there are these numbers at the end, this 3.5, 3.57, and 3.5. It's a good question to ask. 3.5, I don't have the units on the end here, but this is 3.5 milliliters per kilogram per minute. That's the resting oxygen consumption for the human body, regardless of size or age, because it's, it's already a relative number, milliliters per kilogram per minute, and it's the same for every individual. Your absolute consumption will be different. I will get more into that in another video. But these are standards. So what this is saying is you want to take the work rate, but you also want to um, account for the resting oxygen consumption. We don't want to penalize people for that. We don't want to take away from that. We want to add that onto what they're all, you know, what we're doing in exercise. So what we're doing at rest just to sustain our life plus what we're doing during exercise and that will give us the exercise VO2. So hopefully this was a good introduction to that before I leave you the seven in the cycling is to account for the um, a, a vertical factor. Um, that you don't account for, you know, in the walking and running equation. So you have a plus seven there. Um, and before I leave you the stepping equation, you won't use it very much, but if you do, F is whatever your step frequency in steps per minute is, and HT is whatever your height, your step height in, me in uh, meters is. Then you simply plug in those numbers and follow your order of operations Always remember order of operations. Do your parentheses first and then add those together. So I hope this was a good introduction. Uh, I promise everybody I will do videos for every equation with multiple scenarios for finding VO2, finding speed, finding grade, and finding work rates. All right, bye.